Hey YouTube, I just wanted to put together a quick video. Um, you can basically think of this as almost part two to last night's video. Um, <clears throat> there was some a little bit of back and forth uh, with uh, Veritas Files and Rocky, and I'd, I'd like to respond to both of those guys and understand, guy, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I respect those guys at an 11, okay? I mean, no question about it. <clears throat> and that's why I, I just want to kind of respond to their comments. And let me say that I agree with both of them more than they realize. Okay, so we'll use that as the uh, the premise of the video. So one thing that cracks me up about silver is I think about it a lot like the uh, the seventy late seventies early eighties commercial, the Miller Lite commercials with uh, Bubba Smith and uh, Dick Buckus. I used to watch those when I was a kid. If I watched football, uh, those are the commercials that were on all the time. And the premise of the commercial, for all you young guys, you can um, just uh, type in uh, tastes great, less filling, and, and you'll, you'll see them. They're probably dated. And <clears throat> Anyway, the point of the commercial was that one faction enjoyed uh, a beer, Miller Lite, because it tasted great. The other enjoyed it because it was less filling. And basically, they would argue back and forth, and uh, hilar <clears throat> hilarity would ensue, and and they got really big and they ended up inviting a bunch of like basically every sea level uh, celebrity uh, um, uh, uh, athlete or, or whatever would, would be part of these commercials and, and they were pretty big. Um, what cracked me up and, and the premise of it was they love the same thing but for different reasons. Silver is a lot like that. <clears throat> you know, very used in industry. Isn't it funny how small this thing looks next to the kilo? Um, very used in industry and for different reasons, right? Some applications uh, utilize it, its reflectiveness. Some um, applications utilize its uh, conductivity. Others just for its appearance. A lot of different reasons. And it's the same with stackers. We stack for different reasons. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I stack for all of them, okay? All the reasons out I'm going to outline, I stack for all of them. But a lot of you guys have a narrower approach. More than okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> the reason I put together yesterday's video was because a lot of people have been hurt by this recent downturn in the price of silver. Okay, they, they see their silver investment priced in dollars. A lot of us say, well, we just measure it in ounces. That's fine. A lot of people literally price it in dollars. <clears throat> and this downturn has hurt them. So what I wanted to show them was there is, in fact, a strategy that you can use. It doesn't cost you that much more to invest this way, and it will protect you because the collector premiums on coins like the uh, Lunar Series, not the kilos, like the one ounce, um, is a pretty safe bet every single year. Since every issue of the Lunar Series has done nothing but go up in value after it's released. Um, and so I was discussing, as September nears and all of the uh, releases come out, I, I just kind of went into detail about how if you bought that, it's a pretty safe bet. And if you had been buying those right along, you wouldn't have felt this downturn as severely as you did. Well, Veritas Files said, no, well, look, <clears throat> I don't think about my stack in terms of dollars. I am uh, not trying to build wealth. I am trying to preserve my purchasing power for the future. I'm stacking for insurance, and I'm hoping that precious metals have some utility in the event of a dollar collapse so that I can get the things that I need for my family. Absolutely 100% agree with him. <clears throat> and that is a portion of why I stack as well. I love the insurance aspect of silver. Okay? Um, no question about it. It's a it's a huge part of why a lot of people stack, and, and any kind of precious metals. But you know, like I said, I also like the wealth building aspect. I like the forced saving forced savings aspect of it. I like the bright future as far as industrial applications. You know, twenty years ago, we're using silver in ways that people never dreamed of twenty years ago. What are the next twenty years going to bring to utilize its unique properties? and low price level. You know, as the uh, as the world's middle class uh, as the world's um, as the world's biggest economy uh, not biggest economies as the world's uh, most populous countries, <clears throat> China and India, as their middle classes grow and they start requiring all the things that come with the middle class that that require silver, 
that's going to be pretty good future industrial demand, I feel. That's part of the thesis of why stack. There's many reasons for why I stack. <clears throat> so sometimes I'll be doing a video and Veritas file or somebody that, that stacks for a different reason will be, will be saying, well, wait a minute, that, that doesn't speak for me here. And you're right, because I'll be looking at a different approach for that video. But trust me, I stack for all the same reasons. And as far as, um, you know, I, I was also looking at silver as a commodity yesterday, okay? A pretty much a generic commodity. So we were looking at simply supply and demand. I know it's very easy to say, no, nope, you know what, JP Morgan, uh, it manipulates the price of silver, so that's really all that matters. And, and look, I'm not going to take that approach. I'm not going to say it's lazy, but you know what? <clears throat> Sometimes silver simply trades like a commodity. So the fact that we had 30 million extra ounces of silver come online last year for the supply, and we also had declines in the industrial usage, we had declines in silverware, in photography, in bullion sales, and uh, and then I blank. I, I can't remember the last ca ca photography. Um, we we lo we had declines in all those categories. It matters, and the price of the silver was reflected in that. Now, is that a trend going forward? No. We already see that the uh, the bullion sales are at an all time record this year, and I can't wait for next year's report. But it's a data point that's worth looking at. That's why we went over it. And a lot of people are kind of throwing their hands up and saying, why? And I, and I just wanted to show that this is part of the reason why. Let's, um, you know, as far, going back to Veritas Files, <clears throat> and I know he agrees with me on this. You know, I hope that when he is 80 years old, he is sitting in his rocking chair with his, his son, his grandson, and maybe even great-grandson. And just saying, you know, reflecting back on this time and saying, wow, as a country, we really dodged a bullet. I thought it was going to be really bad, but luckily, it missed us. Who knew that you could, in fact, print your way to prosperity? Who knew that you could actually gut the middle class and still become prosperous as a nation? We actually, a case study and how to be financially reckless and make promises to, to uh, generations that you couldn't pay and somehow thrive. Let the history books show that the United States of America were able to print their way to prosperity. Excellent. I really hope that he's able to say that. Will he? I don't know. I really don't know what the outcome is going to be. Nobody does. And that's why I stack to cover all my bases. Okay? Yes, I have the insurance aspect covered. Yes, if there's a future shortage for industrial demand, I have a lot of generic stuff I could send in to get melted. Okay? If, uh, if, if silver is range brown, bound for eternity, I have some coins with collectible appeal that will go up, regardless of what the price of silver does. I'm covering all of my bases. <clears throat> all right, let's talk about Rocky. So Rocky likes to uh, bust my chops a little bit, and, and it's all in good fun, okay? Um, like I said, my, my respect for Rocky and his experience in silver is, uh, you know, immeasurable, okay? So let me just throw that out there. Um, he feels like I promote um, spending too much money on numismatics. And uh, what he usually thinks about is a lot of the novelty stuff that's coming out right now, okay? Okay. Um, you know, the example I used yesterday was the um, the shark coin that came out of New Zealand with the bite marks in it. Okay, very expensive. And guys, I've never promoted that stuff. Okay, what I don't do is I, I don't really care when somebody does buy it. I mean, I don't judge you by what you buy. But um, I have always kind of stressed value. That's why I talk about these numismatic offerings when they first come out. That is when they are at their absolute cheapest. I'm a value guy from that perspective. <clears throat> when you look at my stack, what you might see that you would consider questionable is, yes, I bought some of the Silver Bullet, Silver Shield proofs. But I bought them with a plan in mind because the previous proofs had uh, done so well, so I bought two. Okay, and the, the plan was to flip one and subsidize the cost of the other so that basically the one proof I had would probably be less than the uh, cost of an ounce of silver. That was the plan going in. Sometimes this stuff is really obvious 
Big Silver won. I uh, bought some of those Sentinel rounds by Jack Spurco. And you know what? They sold out in three hours, guys, in the middle of the night. Right now, they're selling for 100 bucks on eBay. I saw, I saw two rounds that sold for 99 That's a small sample. Uh, I haven't checked it recently, but I guarantee they're selling for a premium. So Big Silver won can sit there in his jammies. <laughs> I, I doubt he wears jammies, but let's just say he wears jammies. So he could sit there in his jammies at 3 in the morning and order these rounds, do nothing but order these rounds, and then he can turn around and sell them and probably have 9 ounces of silver. So he's going to end up with about 4 free ounces of silver for just being obs observa observant, observational, I almost made up a word there, just for being observant. Make your stack sometimes work for you guys. If you see something that's obvious, jump on it and flip it and turn it into more ounces. I agree with Rocky guys that, you know, buying quarter ounce coins for 40 bucks from the Royal Canadian Mint isn't good value and I don't buy those. But I'm not going to discourage you guys from doing it because, I mean, it, it's your thing. If that's what you like, that's what you like. You know, I, I, I know it irritates him um, that the mints are uh, producing all these different variations. Okay, I mean, I completely understand. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, you know, people have used as an argument, it's like the baseball card market. But, you know, how like in the 80s uh, it used to be just tops and then all, all, they all came out with different offerings. Well, my argument there is a baseball card is only worth the paper it's printed on. Okay, at least with silver, you still have the underlying metal that'll at least hold its value there. Okay, um, some of these things probably aren't a great um, investment. But you know what? There's room for collectors here, too. You know, I think about my buddy. And first of all, thank God that the mints are trying to come out with it. Well, thank God is a little bit, a little bit of a strong way to put it. I don't mind that the mints... Um, come out with all these different designs and stuff because they're appealing to people that may not be buying silver normally. An example is my buddy that bought those Laos coins with the jade inlay. Okay, he bought four ounces of silver there, but it wasn't, I have a choice between buying eight eagles or buying these four ounces of jade coins. It was literally, I'm going to blow this on something else non-silver related or buy these coins. He wanted to do something special for himself and he chose to buy silver. You never know what that gateway piece of silver is going to be that's going to inspire a new collector. You know, is it going to be the Wildlife Series in motion? It could be. I'm not going to buy those. A hundred bucks for an ounce of silver is just, just too much for me. Unless it's, uh, I hate to say it, but at some point I'd like to get an 08 Kook, Kookaburra. I mean, I, I think that that's just an inspired design. I love it, and I've never been able to spring for it. But um, So I guess someday I will spend that kind of money on one coin if I were to fill out my set, but that's besides the point. My point is that the mints are putting all this effort into it and they're moving a ton of silver. And it's really good for all of us. It, you know, it, I know that there's a potential that some of this stuff could come crashing down at some point, but again, you still have the base metal price to back you up. So, I mean, Rocky, I do agree with you, buddy, and I do look for value, I do. And I, I, I try to buy my numismatics when they're first released because that's the best time to buy them. So I do agree with you more than you think. But silver, to me, it tastes great and it's less filling.